let's talk about science. <laughs> <laughs> Two of the three scientists from We Rogue Like It are here together. I'm your host, uh, Boston PhD. Mm-hmm. DDS something. I think you're DDS. Uh, I think it's Monkey okay. Monkey Junior slash Senior Junior. Um, <laughs> PhD. Yeah. Doctor Moon DDS. Yes, there we go. Doctor Moon, and uh, we're also joined here by Musim uh, MD. There we go. Yep, sure. that works there nicely. There we go. Uh, this is not We Rogue Like It. This is Game Club. If you were listening to it last month, which ho- hopefully you did, where we wrapped up uh, Dream Daddy, I have an addition of ranking, so I figured we might as well do this with Game Club since we don't have anything to do in December. And that's really how this happened. Spoiler alert, um, we had too much time on our hands, and apparently we don't produce enough content as it is. <laughs> I have a problem. Yes, you do. <laughs> so, someone take audition away from... I just feel badly that we're only going to give you 11 months of content instead of 12. <laughs> so I thought... I thought why not? While we're here. Yeah, I only play like oh, five games a month specifically for the non-mainline show. I'm, I'm playing like six games all at the same time right now for this show and it's killing me. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about that. <laughs> we are here to talk about ranking the 11 games we have played this year. We're listening to the audio version. The video version is definitely recommended. You're watching the video version. The ranking is over here. Wait, let me, the big green thing. Am I on the bottom right or the bottom left? You are on the bottom left. So I can do this. The other way. This. There you go. Because mi- it mirrors. <laughs> it mirrors. I forgot That's it right. mirrors. Yep. So all the rankings are over there. Musum's got this if easy. You... Musum could just do this and he's fine. No, he's he's over that way too. I'm really you're all, confused you're all about the whole layout, the so I'm just... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if you listen to We Rogue Like It before, it's going to be very similar. If you haven't... Number one, go listen to it. It's really great. Number two, we're going to go through in chronological order the 11 games we played this year and figure out how they all rank. We're going to start with one and sort of go from there a little bit by the seat of our pants. I'm not going to lie to you. You you deserve better than to me not lie to you. So let's get started here with Iconoclast, Dragon in the List, best game of the year. Let's move on. Uh, Uh, So let's a quick refresh, of course. Sure, we because yeah we can, something we, can we actually talk, yeah. discussed while um, getting set up for the show in the thirty seconds it took for us to put this idea together and suddenly decide <laughs> to do it um, was I've forgotten some games on this list. Hundred percent. As a yep. memory refresher, Iconoclast is the two D side scrolling Metroidvania with the giant spanner, if memory serves correctly. Yes, and the very disappointing final boss. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Memory refreshed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, Iconoclast, not a game we really loved, but someone has to be first on the list, and that's January's game. Yes. <clears throat> so next we have Last Day of June. Is that better or worse than Iconoclast? I have a tough one with this, because like Last Day of June, you got this really cool soundtrack by the the one person that I talked about on the show that I don't remember right now. Go so download February. <laughs> yeah, I don't phone. remember the name. That, that was the one with the yeah. famous musician guy who did it, though. Um, yeah, great soundtrack. And, like, I guess their audio guy was a fan of him and had him send stems of his songs and arrange it. But it had a really cool artwork style. It was a yep. real sad thing. But then, like, the point-and-click aspects were a little annoying. But Iconoclast... A little repetitive. Like, hmm? A little repetitive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. Iconoclast was a little too long, and I don't really like 2D side scrollers that much. But part of me is landing on Iconoclast being just like a hair better than Last Day of June because I really enjoyed the weird storyline with the whatever church thing that ruled everyone. And yeah, the underground yeah. city of rebels and yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think, Moon? I'm with Musum on this. Like, honestly, it could be either or. Maybe Iconoclast takes it by a whisker. Uh, but I think the last day of June is slightly disappointed for me by because it's a time travel story, and if you don't nail, if you miss one section of that thing that you're supposed to do to change the timeline, yeah. you have to do the whole thing all over again. Yeah, that was really annoying as someone who missed one thing like five times. <laughs> I I think mentioning that, I think I'll put it under Iconoclast here, but like, like you're saying, like just by like a millimeter it's it's nothing 
Uh, next up in our March of Sad Games was Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Where are we going to put that? There's uh, those other two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, did you want to go first, Moon? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'd no, actually it's say free for all. I honestly, my biggest detractor from Brother Tale of Two Sons was the fact that it was so hyped. Like, mm. so hyped. Like, I had the first time I played this was for the show, and I had like six years of tell of people telling me that it was one of the greatest games ever made. And you're just like, <laughs> you don't even know. Yes. Yeah. I do agree that we can probably stick it above the other two. Yeah. It, okay. I 100% agree it was overhyped. Yeah. But it was still very good. I mean, how many games actually convey an emotion and story beat with the controls like that? Mm-hmm. Right. That is, and no words. Yeah. It is rarely yeah. like done and executed as well as Brothers did, even if it had other problems and had fans that were... Fans seemed to be too rapid in general. I know I've been one of them before. But mm. I don't know what you're talking about as a fan of Parks and Recreation and as someone who has tried to watch Rick and Morty and someone who's <laughs> never seen The Office. Let me tell you, fans are fine. Perfectly yeah. fine. <laughs> the internet is totally normal. I'm just thinking about all the people I, I probably annoyed by posting on their podcasts or whatever when I first played Warframe like the first year or two. <laughs> Yo, dudes, go play Warframe. It's great. Yeah. All right, the next game here is Super Hot. Uh, Super No arguments hot. needed, I think, with this one. It, this automatically jumps to the top of the list. Yes. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> that makes my job a lot easier, and I agree. It's the most innovative shooter I've played in years. <laughs> I swear, because I was going to say that, and you stole it from me, you big thief. I could see you winding up for it. I just I had to get in there. So, mm. funny story. Before the podcast started, I said there's a clear winner on this list. And I didn't see super hot when I said that. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. There you go. See, it just that that's what's great about these rankings. It just anything can happen. Yeah. Regrets have it's been made more difficult. <laughs> yeah. Uh next game here on our list is Florence. I forget. Uh, is this the visual novel mobile game? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Because okay. I just I I oh, I didn't see this on the list, and I just read this out, and I was like, "Oh God, I don't remember Florence." <laughs> no, this is the artist in the cellist with the really, really pretty yes. music in it. And yeah, the really cool, like intuitive touch controls for everything. Has a yes. really cool art style. Yeah, I want you guys to remember this because I think this should go right below Super Hot. I 100 percent agree with you. This goes right below Super Hot. Okay, I I I will agree with that. I I. I am excited for I think this that's game right. company's next game, whatever that winds up being. I probably should look that up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Next one is Cuphead. Scoot that here to the bottom of the list just to start. Is that better than Last Day of June? Yes. I will agree. I think, Musum, this is the one you weren't on, right? Right. Okay. I will let you guys would... decide where this goes unless you want to put it above Florence. <laughs> I don't know what I have to argue with you. But. Yeah, we're not. Uh, my my takeaway from Cuphead, for to remind everyone, is uh, I don't know if I love... No, I know I like Cuphead, but I don't know if I like it. I know I don't love it. Mm-hmm. There you go. Okay, so it. above Last Day of June, yes. Yeah. Above Iconoclast? Above Iconoclast? Yes. Yeah, I can agree with that. Bro- uh, I think it goes one higher and it stops because I think it goes uh, above Brothers of Tale of Two Sons. Okay. Purely because don't get me wrong, like Brothers' story is amazing. Brothers is yep. f-ing incredibly done. This is a bullet hell shooter designed in the art style that's hand animated from like the 40s. Like this mm-hmm. thing just exudes style at every <clears throat> opportunity. As a game, I absolutely despise how hard it is. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> but i think it it's so strong like if you were to show me a screenshot from any other game and a screenshot from cuphead and say name these two games or there's a do du- a white dude holding the gun walking towards the camera so that could be any one of a million games you show me a right. screenshot of cuphead and it's like that's cuphead 
Like, right. it's that's at chappy. this point, it has become iconic. Like, that style, that yeah. look. And like it or not, there are people out there who will repeatedly headbutt themselves against a wall trying to get better and better scores and all that kind of stuff in this. This is a game I am happy to say I will never get every achievement in, and I am perfectly fine <laughs> no. with that. Yeah. All right, I, I will put it up there. I will agree with you. I think it stops there. I don't think it's better mm. than Florence. No. No. Uh, okay, next game is Tokyo 42, starting at the bottom. <laughs> okay, for and refresher for, staying there. Refresher for everybody. This is the isometric, top down, <laughs> world of assassins, like John Super Wick. Super great style. Mm hmm. Just style for days. Yeah. And that's about it. Uh,. <laughs> basically impossible to play with a controller uh-huh great soundtrack great soundtrack. I, I liked the soundtrack good concept good idea yeah i played it with mouse and keyboard and i still or no i didn't i played it on pc and started with mouse and keyboard and then switched to controller because i disliked the control so much i think the control scheme on this game was a bad idea that they should yeah. have maybe ditched a huge like 30 percent of this game and just started over with their concept of okay we got this right. cool art style this three dimension <clears throat> thing let's completely rethink what we're doing control wise because this is nonsense mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. Are, are we all thinking bottom of the stack right now uh, yeah i think it's bottom of the list yeah. i think i think i think it, <clears throat> it combines two bad things it it is not fun to play and it's mechanically not a solid game. It's so hard to play sometimes. Like, if you don't get that camera angle right and you happen to not see one little edge and <laughs> they can help you, yeah. then... It's over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, next game is Orwell keeping an eye on you. We can at least move that above Tokyo 42. I think that's probably pretty safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, better than Last Day of June. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Better than Iconoclasts. Mm -hmm. Yep. Agreed. Better than Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Yes. Yep. Agreed. Better than Cuphead. Yes. Yup, 100%. Yep. Better than Florence. Mm, I don't know. That's a t Like, so, uh, without me seeing Super Hot and remembering what Florence was, uh, mm -hmm. I looked at the list and thought, oh, obviously the Orwell's going to win this list. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But with, like, these up there, I I don't know, man. Like, Florence is a really solid two-hour experience. It's exactly mm -hmm. what, it, what it wants to be. Yeah. It tells the most tight, compact, emotional-as-hell storyline. Yeah. In a, no fluff. No. It's, it's literally yeah. the, the, it's the steak, the pure steak of video games where it's like, here is the story we want to tell. Here is some, some simple mechanics to do so. We're using the control scheme that we have and like even something as simple as going back to Florence it's it's the mechanics of the arguments like you get your argument yeah. in faster if you match those things faster and then you start to win the argument if you're solving those little puzzle sections yep. it's like yep it's it's the definition of perfectly paced and put together storytelling in a video game format Orwell is a whole different ball game in the fact that it's intense it tells a great story. It has that things are a little bit too close to 2019 kind of thing sure. going on with it right now. I think for me, though, I think Orwell does something incredibly well in the same vein that Florence does, where Orwell's interface is perfect mm -hmm. for this type of game. Like You feel like you're sitting down in front of this government terminal and logging in to do your job, and it... It all goes wrong, but like you feel like that interface is perfect for the job you're doing, and like it always felt great. Dragon stuff that you found from scouring through newspaper articles, and like you found this URL from digging into someone's computer and their history and their trash can, and that pointed you to their bank records, and like you start putting this whole thing together, and Orwell is just really cool. Mm -hmm. And then it, it <laughs> does the classic thing as well, which we mentioned on that show, which is it acts like a machine. Like mm -hmm. the text conversation when the doctor's on the lady's phone account, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm a doctor, or I'm a psychiatrist. You can change her occupation to a psychiatrist because she technically said it, even though it wasn't her. Right. Like, yep. 
it does that well. I'm getting so tortured. Well. You know, like that that famous thing, like, she's being tortured? It's like, no. no. <laughs> I, I I feel like Orwell probably wins this just because its scope is so much bigger than Florence's, and mm-hmm. I feel like it lands it. I, mm-hmm. I don't know that there's a ton of flaws in Orwell, you know? No. 100%. And I think its episodic structure helps it so much. Yes. Because I, I think, but you get one mystery, and when that wraps up, a little teaser for the next episode, but each episode was like two hours, two hours and change. And it just, it was a perfect, like, single bite of game. And yeah. I, I thought that worked really well. And I think with All Well as well, it, like, don't get me wrong, like, Every most of the games on this this list have made me feel something. Like Cuphead made me feel yeah. frustrated. Brothers made me feel <laughs> sad, and a revelation on that controller moment too. Yeah. Iconoclasts amused me. Last Day of June's made me really sad. Tokyo Forty Two made me want this emotion called controller breaking. <laughs> a different depressed. <laughs> like Florence <laughs> made me feel genuinely sad and then genuinely happy straight afterwards. Like the way right. the way that story's told. Super hot makes you feel like a badass. Orwell made yep. me feel dirty. And <laughs> yeah. it's yep. very rare that you can say that a game made you feel icky and feel wrong, and that's a good like, thing you for know- the game. You know you're doing the wrong thing, but I felt my, I found myself in Orwell continuing to dig, hoping I'll find something better. The di- the deeper down I dig this hole, to justify just realizing, it, to justify why yeah, you're like, oh, sleeping so maybe hard. I'll just find this one little article that will blow this whole thing open, and it's just a misunderstanding. Oh no, I found more dead bodies down here. Well, let's just keep digging. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I- Lord, I would be okay with Orwell uh, hitting top of the top of the list. I I'm on the fence with it being above Super Hot. Mm-hmm. Super Hot, okay. I feel like was such. It, it's problematic that the game says this is the most innovative shooter in years. It's like <laughs> because then it is. It it's is the worst thing. Yeah. <laughs> they came up with a but when really it's... amazing idea, and like, I, granted, we played the normal version. I talked a little bit about the VR one, but like, mm-hmm. sure. I, I guess when I'm also making this argument, I'm thinking about my experience with the VR in it too. So, with you guys, not I, at least I don't think you guys have experienced that. No. no. So this, well, I, I, I think part of super hot for me though is it it, it thematically does something similar to Orwell where. Uh, Super Hot is a fine game when it starts, and it's a cool little novelty. But the first time it breaks the fourth wall, yeah, and it breaks the fourth wall in the world too. It, it one of those moments where I just sat back and I was like, "Oh no, th- it got me!" Like mm-hmm. th- this is this is really something special. Like the shooting is fine and the action is fine. Like all that stuff is mechanically really good, but just the 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 breaking the internet and like getting into this this metaverse yeah. storyline of the game is is that's what really escalates it yeah I, honestly for me oh we'll probably go second okay I I would put it at the top but I use them I I'm not gonna die on that hill so I'm I'm more than happy to have it I, be number two I mean, we could do the rest of the list and then come back and decide if we we like it the way it is. I. It's it's tough because, like, in a way, I feel like Orwell is more like philosophically relevant. Mm-hmm. Sure, but in the video game sense, Super Hot is way more awesome and relevant. And mm-hmm. me having that 3D experience, like, after you get through the first level, you're in the guy's like computer room looking around in VR. It's just right. crappy. <laughs> right, you can, like pick up and feed the the floppy into the computer to load levels. Like, like yeah. you do other things. Well, I, I don't want to spoil it because I want you guys to experience it someday. You do ridiculous things in that VR yeah. thing. And then you get that awesome replay at the end where it's like, yeah, that was that was, I did all that super cool stuff. So I mean, yeah. in like, VR, whenever you get and get a trophy or achievement, a post-it note goes flying by you, and those are all <laughs> stuck on your wall. That's, That's cool. really good. Like, oh, and man. the thing with that as well is like I haven't seen like I saw Gersman playing the VR version of it, 
and seeing him yeah. like seeing the how the puzzle changes like uh, you know obviously because it's in VR but seeing him like clear out this one area then throw a gun up towards a balcony where he teleported to next and then catch his right. own gun that he threw to himself <laughs> it's like John Wick come on how <laughs> yeah like okay i'm i'm okay with 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 keeping orwell uh, at number 2 i think it's very much like we were talking about at the beginning of the show like super hot and orwell are both like number one and number two at the same time like they're sort of both ties Mm -hmm. but you you can't go wrong playing either one of them at this point all right only three games left next one is thomas was alone bafta award winning thank you (laughs) thomas was alone (laughs) my apologies i almost forgot (laughs) Um, uh recap for everybody who doesn't remember it's the cubes who talk yes the cubes who talk and leave the internet yep it had a lot of charm, and uh, I think it needed to end maybe one or two levels earlier than it did. Sure, I, I, uh, I would agree a little, a little lengthy. Mm-hmm. Very charming, incredible voice acting, fantastic writing. I cared about shapes of colors, which is not a thing <laughs> I would have ever expected. Yeah, you have a favorite color and shape when you come out of that game. Which is a yeah. really weird thing to say when you're not talking about Tetris. Well, it's funny. Like before, when people would tell me about this game, like I'd never looked up screenshots. I thought it was just a low budget. Oh, we could have. I didn't really have an artist, so I made a box here and a box there. And yeah, like, I made some boxes. That's the character. Like the, actually yeah. really the early versions game. of <laughs> the early versions of Braid that you see on on um, indie game <laughs> movie where it's just boxes chasing right. each other. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Where it's like, yeah, that's that's good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, where do we want to start? Probably better than Brothers. Mm, yes, I'm okay putting it above Brothers. I mean, I'd put it right under Florence, but I, I guess I don't really have a horse in the race well, for Cuphead. That's going to be our next question: Is was Thomas alone? Be- well, was alone better than Cuphead? I would say yes. I mean, they're they're so different, but. Yeah, I'll, I'm perfectly fine with it going above Cuphead. Style can only yeah. get you so far, and in this the game's case, a lack of style got it a lot further. Right. I, I would say it's... I don't think it's better than Florence, but it's it's close. No, it stays exactly I, where it is, I think. I think Florence's length was a boon to Florence and a, a negative to Thomas was love. Yeah. Uh, next up, Grow Home. Let's start at the bottom. Is it better than Tokyo 42? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I'll say, I will say it's, as the tiebreaker, I'll say it's better than Tokyo 42 because it mechanically functions. (laughs) And I will say it stops there. (laughs) That's that's how you can tell we played some real bangers and then some real bangers this year. Uh, it, it makes me happy. When, what I wanted to accomplish with Game Club originally was they're not all going to be great games, mm-hmm. but we're going to play a bunch of games that we missed or are lower budget or are indie darlings or something. And as we found out this, this year, they're not all winners, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're Tokyo 42. <laughs> but I played Tokyo 42 finally, and I found out. I remember that as Not well as cool because, as it looks. Like, for those of you who don't know, and I don't know if Musum's aware of this, like, I watch Giant Bomb videos a lot. However, my life is hectic, so I end up being basically a bit behind on the videos. And when I say a bit behind, I'm talking two to three years behind on the videos. Right. But because I've got an obsessive compulsive problem, I can't just go to the latest page and just start watching there. It's like, no, I'm up to page 64. I've got your spot. this video, and You're I'm right. just going to go through, and if a video catches my eye or a quick look catches my eye, I'll watch it, and then I'll see what yep. I feel. And then while I'm doing that, I will randomly have Discord open and then send a link to the quick look to Boston <laughs> and say, this yep. game would be really good for Game Club. This game would yep. be really good for We Rogue Like It. A, a lot of our list for both shows is Moon sending me something like in the middle of the night being like, this is a really great Game Club game. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. great. Now we have another Game and Club like, game. Literally, <laughs> I sent that to you one day and then 
your immediate was, response was, oh my, I forgot about, how did I forget about Tokyo Forge yep. 2? I was so hyped for when that thing was, I was. Like, announced. I, um, so, I didn't like Tokyo 42. Apologies mm-hmm. for my kids screaming. And, and I accept the order that, that has been put for us. But I hated Grow Home. I don't think there's a game I hated <laughs> Me too. more on this list than Grow Home. <laughs> For me, that was Tokyo 42. <laughs> but I think I think the only thing that got Girl Home above Tokyo 42 for me is I felt like the the act of controlling and locomoting your character in Tokyo 42 often didn't function. I think Girl Home locomoting your character was frustrating, but I think the action of crawling with like one hand, one hand, one hand was fun. Mm-hmm. For granted, like twenty minutes. I <laughs> I literally, did not like that at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't. We're splitting hairs. I'm I'm completely cool yeah. with it. I just we're splitting hairs over losers. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, for me, it was just a case of go home is passable and barely passable. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Tokyo Four functions was like I again not to tweet tweet my own horn or you know paddle my own boat or anything like that but Mm -hmm. i like to consider myself good at video games i play a lot of video games on the hardest difficulty for a that sweet chivo and b the sense of progression (laughs) yeah i recently completed outer worlds on supernova difficulty in 30 37 hours and change yeah adored every second of it like love that thing I don't know why I struggle with shooting people in Tokyo 42. It's like, I'm not a moron. It just doesn't make sense. Like, I I, I can aim and shoot and point and click with the best of them. Why am I struggling that much with Tokyo 42? Why my bullets no make man dead? Like, it's just like, it's just like, what, 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 yeah. All right, well, our final game here is dream daddy let's we'll scoot that above uh grow home for the the basis of our discussion (laughs) that we just had so is dream daddy better than last day of june yes agreed is dream daddy better than iconoclasts yes yes agreed also, I love how much me and Musum are in sync in this whole thing, by the way. <laughs> I'm, I'm digging it. Uh, is Dream Daddy better than Brothers A Tale of Two Sons? Yes. Yeah. Would agree. Is Dream Daddy better than Cuphead? 100% yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will agree with that as well. Is Dream Daddy better than Thomas Was Alone? I feel like this is where the rubber meets the road a little yeah. bit. Mm-hmm. They both tell great stories. Mm-hmm. Thomas was low and has that side scrolly platformy thing that Musum hates so much. Let's say mm-hmm. I, I got impatient with Thomas was alone and Dream Daddy, to me, kind of abruptly ended. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I think I mean Dream Daddy. Obviously, well, it's odd. They're both charming games, right? They both have good writing. Yeah. that is charming. Mm-hmm. I would say Dream Dad. Well, gosh, some of those <laughs> like the cubes getting mad at each other. Or yep. falling in love with each other, or having superpowers, or right. or... not wanting to talk to each other because they oh, that man. that rectangle doesn't touch that doesn't trust that cube thing that just appeared on. Yeah, or backstabbing people. Oh, man. Gosh, Dream Daddy has so many dad puns. He has yeah. dad puns. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, the thing with me is like I, I played Thomas Was Alone way back when, and then did a when we did the episode, I just listened to a playthrough of it because I don't need to yeah. see cubes solve these puzzles that I've already solved. <laughs> right. The thing with Dream Daddy is I've done two dates with one dad, three dates with another dad, and one date with, like, three dads. Mm-hmm. So many dads in my life. Um, dating on, you're dating around. You know, it's it's fine. Like, I still want to go back. I want to see what that third date is going to be like with Brian. I want to not mess right. up the relationship with Robert and get to his smooshy inner interior rather than his hard outer shell. Right. Like, I, I want to go back and experience that, whereas I... I'm fine listening to an audiobook version of Thomas Was Alone. I want to go back and play Dream Daddy just to get more out gotcha. of it. So for me, Dream Daddy goes above Thomas. <clears throat> that is a pretty strong argument because I, I guess I'm in the same boat, really. Like if I were to want to experience Thomas Was Alone again, I don't know that I'd play it when I can just watch a video that's a couple hours or listen to mm-hmm. it and get all that yeah, like, dialogue. 
play through a hundred levels again yeah like literally i had the thing in my pocket i had a youtube playlist open and i was listening to it while i was doing chores yeah yeah and like dream daddy i beat and i started over just to see if there were any special options on the intro and Mm -hmm. i don't yeah i don't think there were (laughs) i don't think there is but you can get photos of each individual dad by making the right choice right and i did get the you know damien's photo me and him had a good ending yes the, the um not uh, well, wait the demure graveyard photograph that i got as well <laughs> yes <laughs> yes nice yeah i don't uh all right i will drag dream daddy above thomas was alone is dream daddy better than florence <sighs> okay here's this... right where i'll get a little snooty okay i think florence is a work of art mm-hmm. i think dream okay. daddy is borderline like well dream daddy's okay this is this is my problem. Is I have no. I, artistic, I get what you're going for. I have no artistic respect for romantic comedies typically, and Dream mm-hmm, Daddy's okay. a romantic comedy, but it's not yes. a movie romantic comedy where obviously all of those people would be trying to actually murder each other after the end. Yeah, it's not. Right. It's not like the tropish like romantic comedy. It's more of a sincere kind of romantic comedy. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But Florence is so I, I'm, small on scope. It it really is a a boon to it. I think in these discussions, mm-hmm. it, it is so incredibly well executed. Yeah, like there's just there's no fat on that game. Yeah, I would be okay with Dream Daddy staying at number four. I, they're both they're both really great for different reasons, but I I would agree with you, Musum. I think. Florence edges it out for me, not by a mile, but mm-hmm. just by like here's a game that musically, artistically, gameplay wise, like it all is a little bit better than Dream Daddy. Dream Daddy has other positives and and other uh, great facets to it, but Florence is just I, it's so close to perfect. I think I think Musum actually phrased this perfectly because I mean, how many years as gamers? Have oh, so old? How many times <laughs> have we seen the cycle of the discussion come up where it's like, oh, video games are art, right? And you hear that every two, three years, that whole thing kicks up again. It's like, no, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Blah blah blah. Like, and we've had games examples in the past where you can say, are oh, games art? Yes, they are. Look at this. But then someone will say, well, no, they're not. Look at Call of Duty. It's like sure, did fine. Go and look at the tin of Heinz, giant tin of Heinz tomato soup, and you, you think that's art compared to the Mona Lisa? Like, it's different sure. classifications of art, but it's the same thing. Just the same way a shooter can be <clears throat> versus something else. But Musum's description is spot on. Like, if anyone ever came to me and said, "Show me a video game that proves that video games can be art," I have got two answers for him: Florence and What Remains mm-hmm. of Edith Finch. Sure. Sit down two hours for this one, uh, four hours for this one. We'll mm-hmm. have a good. We'll have a good like, day. <laughs> they are literally, and the phrasing it, it may sound pretentious, but in sure. the most earnest way possible, both of those games are genuinely works of art to me. Like they mm-hmm. nail what they need to nail. They're in the door, out the door. There's no excess stuff on there that you need to worry about. They are just so amazing experiences. Well, and you just, like, think about, like, some of the... I, I mean, I guess here's another edge it would have over Dream Daddy. Like, in Florence, you know, you have moments where, oh, where's that music coming from? And you, you have her follow the music, and eventually she starts flying through the air. Mm-hmm. And she's yeah. just kind of breathing in the music. <clears throat> in Dream Daddy, you're put into a mini game, which is immediately hilarious, and then the mini game is, is terrible. It takes you out of the experience slightly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. And... And that's probably, I think that probably gives it a leg up in, in my head. Yeah. Okay. No, for me, Florence is, Florence stays where it is. Dream Daddy goes below it. I love Dream Daddy. <clears throat> yep. Dream Daddy's fun. It's a laugh. Yeah, they're just not in the same, they're both being played in the same movie theater, but they're not the same experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, I yeah. think, to be honest, if we're looking at this year's Game Club list, like those top three, like, go and play any one of them like right now they are yeah. all so unique and so perfect in their own ways like i mean like i said oh well make me feel dirty and that's a good thing <laughs> yeah. how right. is making me feel not right with myself a good thing right 
but it does right. it and it does it so well <clears throat> and i didn't expect orwell either but like when you're playing it to be as engrossing as it was because like you start mm-hmm. looking for yeah. stuff and it is way more uh like it draws you in way more than you'd expect it to a hundred percent like I, there was one time i think i started like my usual thing rule is everything off by 11 in bed by midnight at the latest but generally speaking i start my bedtime routine at 11 p.m at the latest so everything turned off start getting ready for bed i think i started an episode of orwell at like 9 30 10 o'clock and then i looked at the clock and it was like 2 a.m and i was like oh <laughs> son of a <laughs> oh that's not good <laughs> yeah all right well let's uh if you're watching the video version you see our top 11 here uh let's recap this just in case especially for the audio listeners Starting at the, from the bottom, Tokyo 42, Grow Home, Last Day of June, Iconoclass, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, Cuphead, Thomas Was Alone, Dream Daddy, and our top three, Florence, Orwell, Keeping an Eye on You, and Super Hot. That's the most Super innovative first person hot. shooter you've ever played. Super. That's right. <laughs> like, I hate the uh, fuck that they put that in there, because it's so it's, perfect. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, all right, well, that's our list. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening and watching. Uh, we were going to announce what game we were going to pick here at the end of this episode. Well, and I forgot to do it. <laughs> totally forgot to do it. Uh, so if you guys want to talk about maybe this year, I can randomly pick a game here right now while we're doing this. Okay. So, okay. Personal front, you mentioned at the start, Musum, before you saw Super Hot was in there. I'm guessing your winner was Florence, or was it Orwell? It was. I didn't see Florence either. My, my winner was Orwell. Yeah. Okay. Florence, that, that probably would have been my winner too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Florence kind of threw a wrench in things because it's it's such a short game and there's not a ton of mechanics in it, but it's like near. If nothing's perfect, this is near perfect execution. You know, mm-hmm, and right. like it has such a good art style and the music is just fantastic <laughs> for it. Like it's yeah. It's one of those games where it says, please play this with headphones on, and you 100% should put headphones in to play that game. All right, random.org has selected our latest game, and this is the just-announced coming to Game Pass game, The Talos Principle. Um, Hold on, Talos Principle. We'll see if I am smart enough to finish this game. (laughs) I know I am not, so... (laughs) So we'll we'll see how far we get. This is not the weird robot woman in the tower game, is it? No, this is the one where the cover is like that, those robot arms petting a white cat. Okay, I might own this already, I don't know. You you probably, I feel like this is one of those games that everybody owns by this point on mm-hmm. some platform, so, and it's it's out on a whole bunch of stuff. So we will be playing the Talos Principle and we'll meet on the third Saturday of January to talk about that. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much everyone for listening and watching, and we'll see you next month. Bye. Bye. Bye.